So I want to say that I, um, I know Christ is my protector and I'm not worried about anything. But I want to tell you, like, what these people do, like, they are, like, they're to tell stuff about you to other people, like, lies and make all this stuff about me. Make all this stuff up and um, say all kinds of things that are not true. So you would look bad. And they play the victim like they're like innocent, like you're the, they're the target or something. But in reality, they're the troublemakers and they're the ones that are like hatred to you, like, and are like the ones, they're the ones about the problems because of how you like, just because you like hold on them because of something that was bothering you like you have to watch like if you're like going through something with a neighbor and they're doing something to you like the situation of the stumping thing it wasn't a bigger deal but I did tell the landlord but I didn't go to write to the landlord right away I went to her and I kept asking her could she stop stumping stop stumping and I kept putting the note on the door, and then finally I went to the landlord and told them, like, the situation. And that's where it got crazy. They started giving me dirty looks, like I was her enemy or something, because I told on her because of her child. And she doesn't, she thinks it's, like, wrong to go and tell on her. Evidently, I was bad to her because she looks at her kid as innocent and doesn't want to control her kid. She doesn't want to discipline her kid. She just wants to let him jump around and he, he knows like people live downstairs. Like you should be trying to tell him like, well, you need to do this, do that and listen to me because I'm the parent and you need to have teach him respect for other people that you live around because that's a part of being a parent but no they want to take it as an assault like and that's the whole how the whole thing started and then he started coming at me with the music when it wasn't really the music because he was playing loud music so how is he telling me to turn my music down if he was playing loud music he was playing loud music I could hear in the hallway and through the shower. Like, I never told on him about it, but you're going to tell on me about my music because it's a Christian. Yeah, right. And all to know, he doesn't like me because I'm a Christian, because of the Christian stuff I'm playing. I 
so I don't know if he did this, but he probably did. But he was telling people about me like lies or something. Because why is it that? And I know he knows other people up here, like Indians, especially the ones downstairs. Like, why all of a sudden, like, I'm like in the car and I look, I wasn't looking at her in a way or anything. I'm autistic and I don't know what my facial expressions are. But when I'm looking at people, I can't really contemplate my expressions of how I'm looking. But if I'm looking a certain way, I'm not trying to be ignorant or nothing. I'm like, not like that. Trying to give people dirty looks, you know? But she, oh my goodness, she was like looking at me crazy. Like, just staring at me like evil. She stared at me all the time she was going in the door. Like, this evil look. And I'm like, I don't know what's wrong with that lady. I don't even know her. And this is why I think he was telling people up here and tell he might know her. He might have told like some lies about me or something, this and that about me, like something. And I know I'm not supposed to care about what they say. And the people that believe the stupid rumors are stupid and dumb. It's dumb believing what people say about other people because you don't even know if it's facts or truth, like true or nothing like that, you know? But I know like what I'm saying in the videos I'm saying, like, all this stuff, like, what I'm going through as living here is really happening. Like, all this stuff I say is really true of what I'm going through. Because you see that, like, the stuff I was saying on the phone to the other people and that it really happened, like, they walked in on me, the people that work here, without a notice. I don't know why, because maybe I'm a Christian and they do stuff like that because I, I don't know. It's crazy. Smear, smear campaigns are a form of damage control used by narcissists when they become aware that they've been, they have been exposed. Smear campaigns are frequently used to, despite the former victim as insane, bipolar, addict, alcoholic, unstable, um... Good digger, theft, cheater, or poor pa or a pair a poor parent. By fabricating a sequence of falsehoods, exaggerations, half truths, suspicions, and false charges about the victim's conduct, the perpetrator works to destroy the victim's credibility and sanity. And the reasons why a smear campaign is so effective at harming the victim are as follows: the victim loses faith in offense and their support system, and they feel alone, scared, and unsure what about what to do. Consider this is a sorting hat from Harry. I don't know if it was Harry Potter. Yeah, that's what they do, though.
So, I just think venting, on the other hand, venting is focusing on expressing your feelings about a person or problem. If a person has made you upset or angry, venting provides a space where you can release your emotions. Venting is healthy because it allows you to vocalize your feelings instead of holding them in. And you can also get insight and support and validation from someone else about the obstacle you're facing. Renting allows you to eventually move on from the issue. It could sound something like, Evelyn has really been making me angry lately, and she keeps telling everyone my secrets from my diary. I pretty always bosses me around, and it's really annoying. I don't know how to tell her to stop telling me what to do. The um, gossiping is about someone occurs when that person hasn't done anything to hurt or offend you. Rather, you are discussing their personal affairs for your inter- entertainment or as a conversation piece over the lunch table. If you don't have anything else to talk about, you might find yourself gossiping about a boredom. And the act of venting arises from frustration, not boredom. When you vent, a person has made you angry or upset and you're expressing your feelings about it. While venting, you talk about a person. But it doesn't involve the personal affairs, only the issues that concern your personality. The motives are different. Gossip can be used as a bully tactic. A person may spread lies and rumors about someone else to hurt and isolate, portray, and embarrass them. Gossip is ill attention and mean spirit, such as the time. Inventing, on the other hand, is done to express your frustration about a person or problem. It's not done to isolate or embarrass anyone. It's used as an emotional outlet for your personal feelings. Venting comes from hurt feelings rather than malicious motives. So I don't have malicious motives when I make these videos. I'm just making doc animations or venting of what I'm going through and stuff, you know? And about the situations I've been through, I was living here. And if I'm saying, like, if I'm still seeing this guy around, like, I'm going to make a video and say, yeah, I've seen this guy around because I need to have, like, documentation of this stuff, like, and I don't know what these people are up to. <laughs> Being around, like, I've been through the crazy, beside the crazy stuff beside me. Like, even if, even if I act out a character and did stuff wrong, I admit that, I admit that, yeah. I did stuff out of character and wrong, yeah. But that doesn't give them the right to do all that weird stuff, like, do stuff in front of my door, burp do crazy stuff like laughing and giving me dirty looks like for what like if you're giving me a dirty look you need to say why you're giving me a dirty look because i don't know why the reason for it especially if i don't talk to them people i don't talk to them i don't know them they never ever try to socialize with me or be like nice so I don't know why other than the other situation, the why they give me a dirty look.
But it wasn't until then that his sister moved upstairs. And then I told the landlord about the stumping. And that's when everything escalated. Oh my goodness. And that's why it happens in real life. Like, we have to watch, like, neighbors because they get violent and do stupid things because you were going to tell the landlord on them because of their bad behavior. And they don't want to be caught up in all that stuff. They don't want to be caught. And maybe I shouldn't have been you playing the loud music so they wouldn't have that for excuse to use against me. Like... Because they were doing that way before loud music. And that's how they gaslight you. Like, they gaslight you and use all these emotional mechanisms. Psychological like use. Gaslight like you, like, you're wrong or something. But they don't own up to their own behavior, too. And then. She wants a guy call, like, attitude, precisely, and be all smart and give the little dirty looks. Look at me like I'm the bad person, like, crazy. I'm such a bad person, right? No, I'm not a bad person. Never my intentions. I'm trying to get out of this wacko apartment buildings. Gossip is ill attention and mean spirit much of the time, but venting on the other hand is done to express your frustration about a person or a problem. It's not done to isolate or embarrass anyone. It is used as an emotional outlet for your personal feelings.
ouais. Ouais. The scripture is good. Palms 37, 32. Earth 32. This is a good one. Wait. This is exactly what I'm talking about. About stalking. Stalking and watching. Palms 37, 32. The wicked lie in wait for the righteous, intent on putting them to death. Personal experience taught David that a sharp conflict exists between the wicked and the righteous. Broadly speaking, conflicts in David's life were between those who honored God and those who did not. And David, while imperfect, was known as a man after God's own heart, but he had was marked for death by his disobedient King Saul. First Samuel chapter thirteen, verse thirteen, fourteen, Acts chapter thirteen, verse twenty two. He observes from such examples that the wicked person lies in wait for an opportunity to kill the righteous person. Proverbs 24, verse 15. The animosity of Judas and Israel's wicked religious leader toward Jesus also illustrates its truth. Jesus not as, Judas, not a believer, though one of Jesus' closest companions, conspired to lay a trap allowing Jesus to be captured away from the public eye. Matthew chapter 26, 14, verse 16. In the long-lasting conflict between good and evil, the evil war system under the rule of Satan, the devil Satan, John chapter 14, 30, opposes God's righteous people. And Jesus told his disciples, If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of this world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world will hate you. John chapter 15, 19, verse 19. Chapter summoning the palms, David contracts the way God protects and saves his people, contrasted with the ruin, which waits the wicked. Much of it seems to be based on David's own experiences in Palms 37, 25, 35. As with many other passages in Palms and Proverbs, this passage occurs godly wisdom. Those who reject God and his ways can expect uncertainty on earth and disaster and eternity. Palms 37, 34, 40 describes the action of the wicked and the judgment they face at the hands of the Lord. It also relates what the righteous person ought to do and what the Lord will do for him. The wicked have a dreadful future, whereas the future of the righteous is one of a salvation, peace, and deliverance.
Where is Palms at in this commentary? I love this commentary. Robert's palms. I didn't read the palms yet. I just wanted to read them. Maybe we should start reading it like together. So here it goes. The commentary says that uh, Palms 37, 32. The wicked watches for an opportunity to pounce on the innocent and destroy him. Exactly. That's what I feel like. <laughs> but Jehovah will neither abandon the innocent to the power of the fool, nor allow him to be declared guilty. If a case against him comes to a trial, God is the guardian and advocate of all his own people. Our best policy in this world is therefore to trust, wait on the Lord, and obey, keep his ways. There is no other way to be happy in Jesus. But that is not at all. For the sixth time, the palms promises that all such will inherit the land. And then he adds a further assurance. When the wicked are destroyed, the believers, only a vomit will be that of spectators. They will not take pleasure in the awful event, but where themselves stand free from any form of judgment. And that's what I feel the narcissists do. They sit there and watch you and watch your every move so they can, like, take their next steps on what they're planning to do, like, negativity. It's, like, crazy. While I let go, I'm going to read the Bible on another live.